Hello, you're welcome to this week's edition of The Magnet. Remember, by now you know that The Magnet is bringing in veterans, major players in the various professions, to share their wealth of knowledge for the young ones to learn from. And today we call it, on the program, we call it Lending a Voice to Business Growth. You call it mentoring on television. Who is our magnet for this week? The only way you find out is to watch this package, a documentary of our veteran, our magnet. We'll back shortly to have an interactive discussion with him. Mr. Samuel Femike was born in 1950 in Okwela, Edo State. He's a qualified chartered accountant and a master degree holder in finance and investment from the University of Exeter, USA. A member of the Institution of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria, ICANN, and Association of Chartered and Corporate Accountants, ACCA, UK. He practiced accountancy with lots of accounting firms in the United States and Nigeria before establishing his own practice, SS Affirmicare and Company Chartered Accountant, 1985. His introduction of the value for money reviews in the Nigerian oil and gas industry was solely pioneered by him as a managing partner of the firm. Recently, he has been working with Turner and Townsend to set up performance measurements and benchmarking system, first in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. He has published and authored three books from his wealth of knowledge and wisdom from his profession. He is a well-known philanthropist and community leader. He is a founding trustee and member of ESACO Club 81 and presently the newly elected national president of the people of Ukomuyo community. Okwela clan, ESACO East local government area of Edo State, a highly commendable position of leadership in the whole of Okwela community. You're welcome back. The program is The Magnet. And it's my pleasure, quite delighted, to have on the program, after a several trial, we thank God that you finally made it. We have uh, Chief SSO Afemike. He's the managing, I think they call him managing partner, managing director, <laughs> in charge of SS Afemike Consulting Limited. You're welcome to The Magnet, sir. Now, our focus is on the accountancy profession today. Tell us a bit about the profession. What for the layman there? What is accounting? What is accountancy? Just to start with. Uh, accountancy is uh, uh, having to help companies uh, keep records, uh, prepare their financial statements, uh, auditing such financial statements, and uh, teaching people how to interpret those financial statements. Uh, it also has to do with advising companies on how to raise money, how to manage their business, how to grow sustainably. Uh, and it stretches to even um, uh, things like um, uh, receivership, when companies uh, can no longer continue business. Uh, insolvency, when they, 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 are, they, they, they can no, more, no longer meet their liabilities, how to so, support them back to life or help them go to bed, uh, send the companies to bed. So accountancy professional is cradle to grave. Mm. When you set up a business, it helps you, it's there to support you. When the business dies, it's there to help you know, lay the business to, 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 to bed. Very well said and um, good preamble to uh, discuss today. Now, sir, what does it require? Who should be an accountant? What is the requirement to be an accountant? Well, um, to be an accountant, you have to have uh, qualifications in mathematics and English. You uh, have to be a graduate, not necessarily a graduate of accounting. Uh, okay. You have to be ready to uh, study, uh, take exams, uh, like Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria exams. And um, you know you, you have to work hard because to pass those exams you have to be very hardworking and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, intelligent. I mean mm -hmm. because accounting itself is is, is, is a hard business. It's, <laughs> it's difficult, but um, the training makes it easy uh, for, you, for to you, practice. you to practice. Once you are able to pass those exams, mm -hmm. then you are good enough to be a good accountant. Okay, well, you know in our own business we hear of different uh, professional bodies. We hear of Annan, we hear of ICANN, to the extent you also get to being a fellow. Just 
slightly yeah. explain this to us? Yes. Well, um, the Institute of Chartered Accountants uh, was set up by uh, uh, an act uh, of the Federal Republic, and uh, it remained the sole accountancy profession until the government uh, decided to set up the Association of uh, Nigeria Accountants, or Accountants of Nigeria, ANAN. Uh, they are also accountants, but I mean, we, we've argued in the, <laughs> in the profession that uh, it's good if you want to maintain one standard, you should have one body. Mm -hmm. But they, they exist with us and they are our colleagues, they are our friends, we, we work together. Mm. Uh, and uh, we've been quite uh, happy together. You so know, in Nigeria, you have ICANN, you have Anon. Okay, because why ask that? When we were in the industry for a while, if you are not a qualified uh, ICANN holder, mm -hmm. you will not be promoted. Yes. And, and then when Anand came, he said it's also the same thing. Yes. Is it that you, being a member of Anand mm -hmm. cannot be the same as having the exams for ICANN? Well, I mean, like I said, uh, if you want to have uh, one standard, then you have one body. Yeah. But if you have two bodies, you can never have the same standards. But what it is is that uh, Anan uh, initially uh, uh, lowered their own a position to say if you are a graduate you can be a member okay. but I think they've started exams and mm. very quickly you find that they will rise to the level of mm. uh, I, I can, can. Mm. They, are, they, are, they are students who pass exams and become accountants you know that's how things grow mm. uh, things grow organically with time I'm sure they will they will, they will rise to the point of I can okay mm -hmm. you know the first question your first uh, response was you analyzed the profession of accounting and who can be an accountant. Mm -hmm. Some organizations, some bodies, some businesses just coming up may not be able to afford an accountant mm -hmm. because I hear you come very expensive and all that. Maybe mm -hmm. business that is just an entrepreneur. Yes. How do you think such person can keep proper yeah, uh, financial records? Things are changing. Now, things have changed considerably from the last couple of years when you have to employ an accountant pay salaries to that accountant to keep uh, your records. Mm. Uh, two, you find that uh, people, accountants used to go to the office of the client and um, you know pay, get the client paid to keep records uh, and all that. But all that is changing with cloud accounting. You can sit wherever you are, in uh, Benin, in uh, Kaduna, even in London, in, uh, in Canada, and you, 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 you keep records um, online for, for, for people. For clients. Uh, given, for clients. Given mm -hmm. such um, um, situations, you find that uh, for a very small fee, mm -hmm. you can help people keep records, mm -hmm. so you don't have to pay the, the, the huge salaries for staff. staff. Yeah. <laughs> so things are changing, okay. and, and that, that is what we also do very well here. Okay. Before we go on to the next question, we still have our veteran here, a practitioner, a fellow of the accounting profession, Chief SSO Afemike. He is the managing partner of SS Afemike Consulting. Let's bring you a a young player in the industry, how has he or she been able to cope with a very, very, I say, harsh climates, harsh business climates in Nigeria? We'll be here to continue the very, very interesting conversation with her. I'm an entrepreneur, I produce prints. Uh, it goes through certain process, and the process is what you're about. To see present. What are the basic ingredients that we need to make? Uh, uh, we have ingredients for it. Like here, yeah, we have calcium. Calcium? Calcium. Okay. Yes. We have titan. Uh, Akuna, rather. Okay. She gets. Then we have titan. So, where do you get all these materials from? It's, you can buy it. You have a market for it? Yes. If you go to Ojota, if you go to Anokpaja, if you go to Songu. They have sections where they sell this material. So, why did you start making paint? How and uh, when did you start it? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, if you want to start anything in this country, the first thing that must come to your mind is you have to solve a problem. Oh. If you want to go into the market, the first thing that should come to your mind as an entrepreneur so is that you must solve a problem. problem. So if you solve a problem, you already have a market for that thing. So when I graduated from school, I looked at what we had, the society, things that was needed. I felt the painting industry has a very big future. You build houses every day, you paint your rooms every day, you paint your society going to it. And um, we thank God, we are still in it. First and foremost, you establish something. Then with time, you create the market. Then with time, you create the brand. Then with time, the money starts flowing. 
the money is already flowing anyway, but it's not changing. Maybe not in the trillions like Nigeria budgets, but it's flowing in. It will come. Yes. So, uh, apart from making paint, do you paint also? Like paint building and No, I don't paint. But for in my company, I have a section for painters for as well. Paint. So should they decide that they need painters, can easily take them to them. Um, my advice is that they should at least come into it. The more people we have in it, the better for everybody. But, uh, as it is, there's this phobia and fear for the painting industry because of the capital intensity of it. But like every other thing, you get it, just come into it. Once you come into it, you see that it's easy. Fine, you face challenges like every other thing in life. But as time goes on, you begin to enjoy it. And then, you know, for the future of the country as well. Welcome back. The program is still the magnet. And I still have with us Chief Samuel Sunday O Afemike. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> You're on the magnet, <laughs> lending a voice to growing the business. Okay, sir. So, we halted where the accountants are now doing cloud practice, right? Yes. Helping people cloud to accounting. cloud accounting. <clears throat> Remote late tip records. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, people say that for your business to succeed, you must be able to differentiate your personal income with the company income. Mm -hmm. How easy is that? I mean, you must have mm -hmm. to tell us so that those who are just coming up in the business should try as much as possible to adhere mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. From the beginning, you register uh, uh, your company or you incorporate your company, uh, you make sure that it's separate uh, from you. That is the whole essence of mm -hmm. incorporation. It's separate from you, the person. Because SS and FMK consulting is different from SS and FMK. So you set up uh, bank accounts for SS and FMK consulting, the company, and uh, you ensure you keep records. Uh, most of the businesses here don't adhere to proper record keeping. Exactly. From basic things like uh, having a payment voucher, having a petty cash voucher, having a cash book, so that any time you spend money, you write who you paid, how much you paid, and the purpose of the payment, and that goes straight to the company records. Okay. At the end of the month, you make sure you pay salaries, you pay yourself, you take your money to your bank account and you spend it. Okay. So you don't spend company money for your personal okay. business. And when you do that, you find that it's very easy to distinguish between SS and Femike, the person, and SS and Femike consulting okay. the business, the entity. Very, very easy. Okay, I hope you have heard that. Now, sir, what is the importance or the role of budgeting to proper accounting that we're talking about? Yes. Uh, well, budgeting is uh, planning. Uh, you find that in most cases, people just uh, get up in the morning and spend money without, without planning. So budgeting is planning forward uh, for one year, for six months, for one month or weekly. For, to for projects. For pro pro plan for projects. I mean, where you want to carry out executive project, you say this is how much it's going to cost you. You think of how much you are, how you are going to raise the money. And then as you raise money, you make sure that you spend very prudently to ensure that you don't overspend uh, and ensure that uh, the project is delivered according to uh, the, 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 the budget. According, it's not over, there's no overrun. Uh, yeah, spillover and so on and so forth. So to that extent, uh, budget is good for not just the company, but for individuals. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, which market woman will go to the market and won't plan mm -hmm. what she intends to spend, what she intends to buy, mm -hmm. and uh, where she will get the cheapest mm -hmm. uh, quality and then uh, spend the money. So budget is something that every business, mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, every individual mm -hmm. should uh, learn to practice. Okay. I want you to debunk this, that accountants are, they are very stingy, they don't like spending <laughs> money. That it's related to the budget you are talking about, you know. The accountants are only just prudent. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to waste money. Mm -hmm. You spend money where you think is going to give you the greatest impact. But the accountant will do his own analysis, his evaluation, and say, look, this expenditure is likely to Cost be... Cost-benefit analysis. Okay, yes. Uh, so to the extent that the if the cost is higher than the benefit, he will do it. Mm. And that is why they say accountants are stingy. But they are only just prudent. Mm. And we appeal that uh, all people should, now things are very yeah. difficult, mm. people should try to be prudent mm. with their, their resources right. because things are hard. Okay. Now, what level should an accountant get to, I mean educationally? To what level do you think, I hear a fellow, is it that you write an exam to become a fellow? Or to what level do you think 
qualification wise they can attain? No, uh, once you pass your uh, Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria exams, for example, mm -hmm. you become an associate. Okay. Uh, the next is just to practice, mm -hmm. uh, to work hard. Uh, with integrity and mm -hmm. then uh, after some years five seven years you become a fellow mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, carries you through uh, but of course a lot of accountants do uh, postgraduate studies they do masters some even training and retraining yes uh, but then there is uh, the continuous uh, professional education which I, I, I can mandate mm -hmm. uh, you must do uh, many hours a year mm -hmm. uh, you follow them but at the end of the day what matters is hard work mm -hmm. uh, you know yeah you talk about you talk about 10 mm -hmm. 10 thousand hour rule mm -hmm. uh, there is nobody that has worked very hard mm -hmm. at 10 10 thousand hours in his profession that mm -hmm. has not succeeded okay. that is the essence of it hard work yeah. hard work is the bane of uh, success anywhere you are Let's take this short break again. We'll be back to continue with this very interactive conversation. Our focus today is on accountancy profession. We'll be back shortly. The program is The Magnet. We are interacting here, quite stimulating discussion, with Chief SS Afemike. He is the managing consultant with SS Afemike Consulting Limited. You're welcome on the program, sir. Thank you very much, Ella. Now, we hear of several softwares that assist with record keeping when we talk about the accountants that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, we also hear of, um, there are some you have developed yourself, value for money reviews to business. I don't know if I'm getting it right. Mm -hmm. What are these softwares that you think people can adapt or use to aid their proper financial records. Okay. Um, you know, life has changed. Yes. Uh, in those days, we used to keep uh, accounts with big, big ledgers <laughs> and uh, use big calculators mm. and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. But um, technology has changed all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we have uh, softwares, you, you post your books, uh, automatically generates your financial statements, and uh, it even helps you to calculate ratios. I mean, uh, here, in uh, SSM Consulting, we've contributed our own quota to that uh, progression. We have um, Kuba Technologies, which specializes in software development. Okay. Uh, they've developed a software, BMAC, mm. which is for accounting mm. uh, from beginning to the end. It also has an inventory management system to help companies manage uh, inventory because our people don't manage inventory properly, mm -hmm. uh, even in the marketplace. And then we have human resources. And we are continuing to develop. In fact, we are building a town hall, a virtual town hall, to help in mentoring, mm. uh, growing, company, growing companies, young companies, SMEs, and so on and so forth. So uh, that is what we'll be doing. Uh, we are the only indigenous company that has uh, we created that uh, breadth of uh, software. Uh, we just uh, came back from ICANN conference mm. where there were about uh, five, six uh, software in exhibition. Uh, all the others were representatives of foreign companies like mm. the Sage, like Peachtree and, mm. and, and all that. Uh, but uh, we are the only indigenous company and um, our software is very user friendly and very robust. Interesting. Mm. You know, when these days when we talk about local content, yes. why should anybody go and start uh, patronizing peach tree and the likes when mm. you have a. Uh, but how aware are people of your software? Uh, well, I mean, like I said, we just came back from ICANN conference. Okay. It's, a, it's a young uh, software, it's just recently uh, developed because we, we, we felt we should contribute our quota to the growth of SMEs because. Uh, 65% um, of SMEs die in the first uh, mm -hmm. you know, two years. years, and it's mainly because of poor record keeping. A lot of people think that uh, it's because they don't have money or, or, or uh, any sort of thing, but it's simply because they don't keep records, don't know what they are doing, whether they are doing well, where their challenges are. So we said to contribute to the SME market, help mm -hmm. grow businesses and develop Nigeria, we, we do this software, and you know, people are are taking to it. Obviously, it, it, it requires quite a bit of marketing. Yeah, mm. but it's a step mm -hmm. at a time. We'll get there. Yeah, very interesting. <laughs> you know, you also seem to have quite a numerous uh, business interests in some other, you know, organization. Mm. We hear of, um, I don't know, Meva Green Consulting, mm -hmm. Internet, and your internet services. Yes. What is what's that about? Tell us about uh, it. Well, um, 
Mever Green uh, is um, a recruitment uh, outfit. Okay. Because you see, like those of us who trained in the UK, we, we, we know that um, a company does not necessarily have to employ all the staff. Uh, if you're, you can always get a temporary person to fill in for a month, two months, three months, say for example, if your secretary is going on leave. Mm -hmm. Now, all those ideas uh, are not quite um, ingrained in our society. Mm. So, Meva Green is to ensure that uh, you know, people are properly recruited, you know, good people, companies get good people, and then even when they need temporary staff, they mm. are able to give the, that, 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 that support. Okay. That's what we, we are doing with um, Meva Green. Yeah, yeah. And also to support companies in preparing their, um, preparing their payrolls mm. and so on. So, you don't necessarily have to employ people to keep your, prepare your payrolls. In mm. fact, it may help if an independent person uh, keeps your payroll for you because you just submit it on the 25th, 26th when you want to pay salaries and uh, it takes the burden off you. Mm, you. And that is the essence of it. Mm. Interesting. You see, you have added value in so many organizations, companies. We hear of the World Bank, we hear of uh, the oil and gas sector before you decided to set up yours. You know, I want you to counsel people on the benefits of apprenticeship, internship, mm. before you decide to say, okay, I'm setting up a business okay. with yeah. your own experience. Yes, let me start by saying that um, there are uh, key things that uh, you must bear in mind before you set up a business. You have to look at a business where you have a, a where you can be the best, where you have core competence. Mm -hmm. And core competence is, uh, is it's something to be looked at very well because you can be a good mathematician, but you may not be uh, the best at mathematics. If you go to school, you will not be the, the best mathematician. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at core competence, very, very important. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to have passion, passion for what you do. Because if you don't have passion, that's it. For, I come here by 9.30, I stay till 11 to 12 in the night because I say, look, I'm, I'm being paid for this. It's lovely. I enjoy it. If you don't enjoy what you do, I then you are, you are wasting time. And then you must have uh, an idea that it needs uh, an economic uh, engine. Now, if you are best at what you do, you are passionate about what you do, but you don't have an economic engine for the business, then it's a hobby. What's the economic yeah. engine for Economic engine is uh, make sure that your business makes money. Okay. It must have an idea that you can sell to somebody and you bring in money. Mm -hmm. So these three ingredients have to be there. Mm -hmm. When these three ingredients are there, you move to, you start your business. Mm -hmm. You work hard at the, the, the mm -hmm. of them. Now, the key thing is to, like I tell you just now, the 10 hour rule, mm -hmm. 10,000 hour rule. Hard work, hard work, hard work. If you look at these musicians, you, there's no person that has succeeded that has not worked many Round hours. So you have to be ready to work hard. Mm -hmm. Now, when you work hard, all you get is success. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, in challenging times like this, mm -hmm. in challenging times like yeah. this, you, you, you have to bear in mind what we call the Stockdale Paradox. The Stockdale paradox arises from a soldier that was shot down in Vietnam mm. who survived. Mm. And he survived not because he, he, he was depressed or he was um, you know, anxious, uh, optimistic that he will live. He, he, there were two things that helped guide him to, mm. to survive. That is the duality mm. of accepting the realities of today but keeping your focus on where you are going to. Mm. Now, when you accept the realities of what on ground. On ground. And knowing that, well, it's going to be difficult, but I, that's where I want to go. Mm. Set your eyes there. Then go. obviously you will get there. Mm. So you find that the advice for our use is that um, they should have those three ingredients. Mm. You know, be the best, uh, have competency in what they are doing, let them uh, work hard, let them have an um, uh, economic engine, mm. and be passionate. Mm. But then working hard alone is not enough. Mm. You must be able to face reality. Mm. I mean, a lot of people, they say, oh, these are difficult. Mm. I'm going to Canada. I'm going to abandon this. No, people built Canada. Mm -hmm. Be patient. It will not remain like this forever. Have your goal. Mm. Set your eye on your goal. Accept it's difficult. Mm. Manage today, and you will get there. And that is the most important aspect of life. life.